Hi, I'm Stu Miniman with theCUBE, and we're here at the Winslow Technology Group, Dell EMC User Group, and happy to have on the program a uh, multi-time guest of theCUBE, Scott Winslow, who's the president and founder of Winslow Technology Group. Scott, thanks so much for having us here. Good to be here, Stu. Good afternoon. All right, so you opened up the event here. I think you've said you've got between 150 and 175 users, and if I, if I remember right, your first user event was actually here, and it was like, what, eight users? Uh, so, uh, you know, a great location here in Boston, you know, Fenway right behind, you're taking, you know, your users uh, to, to the game. Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, the history of, the, you know, the company uh, and, and, and this event. Yeah, well, we started the user group uh, 13 years ago. It was here at the Hotel Commonwealth. Uh, and uh, it's been a great uh, venue for us. Really, it started with eight customers around a conference room table. We had uh, uh, Marty Sanders, the CTO from Compellent, Phil Soren, one of my mentors, who's the CEO of Compellent and founder, and uh, I think we were talking about how do we improve the GUI on the enterprise manager for <laughs> Compellent, and that was how it started, and kind of last minute, we decided to go to a ball game afterwards, and that was kind of the roots of uh, this event, but you know, it's changed over the 13 or 14 years, but we try to provide really good education for our our customers, uh, give them some things to think about in their infrastructure and their environments. We try to be a thought leader, and it's kind of evolved around the, the, that theme for the last you know, 13 or 14 years. Obviously a lot bigger now than it was. We've grown up. Uh, the challenge for us is how do we continue to have our customers have a white glove experience as we continue to, to grow. But we're, we're really excited about where Compellent took us to Dell, and Dell led us to Dell EMC, and you know, here we are. Yeah, so uh, compelling to Dell, Dell to Dell EMC, and we're still talking to the storage industry about making their user interfaces better, right? <laughs> we are. <laughs> we are. Well, I mean, it, it, we are in that one sense, but in another sense, as you move into hyper-converged, yeah. you know, that really is kind of the backdrop for that story, right? Because as you get into hyper-converged infrastructures, you're talking about, you know, one-click upgrades of server storage networking hypervisor, so I think it, uh, it really is kind of a good backdrop, and we've seen that evolve over the years. Yes, yeah, so Scott, when I look at your portfolio, you started mm -hmm. out very much storage, you know, a yeah. server storage storage network, hyper-converged, yeah. you know, the PC and mobile, cloud, mm -hmm. um, you know, how, how many people you have in the company now and, and how do you manage that kind of change and expanse of, of your portfolio without, you know, g getting, you know, a mile wide and an inch deep? Yeah, uh, we've got 37 people in the company now, uh, so it's, uh, we've added six this year already. Uh, I think, you know, we try not to go too wide in terms of number of vendors. Uh, we've tried to focus on a, a few key strategic partners, so for us that's, you know, Dell EMC, uh, it's Nutanix, it's VMware, and try to really specialize in those areas. We think customers are looking for a partner that's got deep technical expertise, really good sales acumen. Um, I guess a fair criticism of us would be you don't go wide enough. You're not partnered with Cisco or HP. But we'll accept that. We think it's led to you know 35% growth over the last three years, and we think it's been you know a good strategy for us. Yeah, no, no strong growth, absolutely. Uh, what are you hearing from your users? You know, how much of this this digital transformation pulling them along and, and driving them to kind of that breadth of solutions that you're offering? Yeah, I mean we're having conversations with them every day, and in the conversation oftentimes is. You know, do we continue kind of down the path we've been? We're very comfortable with a, a three, two, one solution. For us, a lot of times that's a Dell server, Dell networking, Dell compellent. Uh, we're very comfortable uh, providing that. But you know, as they look and say, hey, we built this wonderful car, but it's probably going to run out of gas at some point, do we move into more of a hyper-converged solution? Do we look at you know, a cloud solution? And you know, how do they continue to evolve their uh, environments? And that's uh, provided a great uh, role for us to you know, consult with them in, the, in that regard. Yeah, so. uh, all of your partners, uh, Dell, Nutanix, VMware, all trying to figure out how they live in kind of this hybrid or multi-cloud world. Mm -hmm. How are your partners doing? What you, as kind of the voice of the customer, do you want to see from them to kind of mature these solutions even further? Well, I think uh, we've seen it already. If you think about like a dot .next, you know, Nutanix announces cloud integration with Google. I think we're looking for solutions where we can provide a really good uh, on-prem solution for some of the data, but then you have to have the ability to go off-prem and have cloud integration. And if I look at Nutanix, Dell EMC, uh, VMware, I think they're uh, providing that. If you look at like an NSX solution from VMware, for example, you know, we've seen the uh, virtualization of compute with VMware. We've seen the virtualization of storage with products like Compellent and others. And now you've got a, a virtualization layer, an abstraction layer in the networking with uh, NSX, and that provides some real benefits in terms of 
you know, what can be done around operating efficiencies with networking, micro segmentation, uh, et cetera. So, uh, I th you know, we see those vendors providing those kinds of solutions. Yeah, so NSX is one, going to be one of the critical components when we get VMware on AWS. I'm curious yeah. whether that Microsoft Azure stack or uh, Jeremy Burton was talking this morning about VirtuStream being able to go on premises. Mm -hmm. um, those solutions, they excite you? Do they excite your customers? You know, what, what, what do you say? They do, they do excite our customers. I, I would say right now, we're, uh, I don't know if they excite our CFO as much. <laughs> we're having a lot of conversations with customers about the, like, things like NSX. I wouldn't say it's been a big revenue driver for us. We're still driving a lot of revenue through some of the traditional you know, server storage networking, hyper-converged solutions, but I would say as it relates to like an NSX, for example, uh, it's a topic that customers want to talk about. Security is very much top of mind, and uh, it hasn't translated yet into a lot of um, revenue. Uh, but it's definitely a part of the building blocks that uh, customer, our customers are looking at. Yeah, you, you bring up your CFO. I'm, I'm curious, how does the customers looking to kind of change CapEx into OpEx, mm -hmm. how does that affect you? Uh, are you are service providers in the public cloud, are those an opportunity for you for partnership? Uh, yeah. Are they a challenge for kind of the channel's business model? Yeah, it's a good question. I think um, we've seen a lot of the partners that we work with try to provide an operating uh, OpEx model and try to be more cloud-like in their solutions. So if you look at the Nutanix's and the VX Rails, you know, having a uh, solution from Dell EMC or from Nutanix where you can, you know, uh, present it up almost like a cloud solution where they only have to commit to maybe 40% of the overall payment or they can grow it very quickly like they would a cloud solution. So we're seeing a lot of that uh, type of uh, activity, I would say. Um, you know, at the same time, we're reaching out to the cloud providers, the Amazons and the Azures, to figure out, um, you know, can we be partnered with them, and what does that model look like? And uh, you know, it's certainly not going to be a lot of margin working with those uh, types of uh, providers, but you can build a big consulting practice around it. So we're we're heavily engaged in those kind of uh, discussions. All right, Scott. Last yeah. thing, uh, as your users, uh, the, as they walk away from this year's event, what do you yeah. want them to think about their relationship with you and uh, kind of th th their big takeaway from the event? Yeah, I mean, for us, we try to be the trusted advisor, right? That's our, our role. You've got a number of OEMs out there. We're putting solutions together. That's why we call our engineering team the solutions architects, because we're piecing it all together for them. I look at the manufacturers kind of as like a big aircraft carrier, and they're good aircraft carriers, but we're a little speedboat, right? We're, we can go back and forth. We're very nimble. We can demo stuff quickly. So I want them to think about us as a solution provider, as a trusted advisor, and to think about some of the new technologies that we presented up today. They're so busy, you know, working through day-to-day -day problems that in one afternoon to be able to come out here and hear about like a cloud solution like VirtuStream, NSX, to hear about what's going on at Hyperconverge, what's going on in the managed security market, I, I'm hoping they'll take away some of those ideas and think about how it might apply in their business. All right, well, Scott, really appreciate you bringing theCUBE here. Looking forward to talking to a lot of your customers as well as some of uh, the, the, the partners and uh, you, you know everyone here at the show. Uh, I've been Stu Miniman, this is theCUBE.